Welcome back, everyone, to another Giga Hub One Shot, uh, where we talk about things that we like that you may or may not like. Yeah. Uh, before we continue, let's talk about. <laughs> I don't like anything. He doesn't love any. No, no. Apparently, we don't. Uh, he. <laughs> before we continue, let's talk about our wonderful sponsor, Cosmic Comics, the jewel of the Mojave Desert. Uh, if you ever find yourself over uh, here on in our little, our little desert Hamlet town, a little, ha- little neon Hamlet a tiny over here. Little Hamlet. Um, come on down to Cosmic Comics. Uh, look around. We have all kinds of comic books. Uh, as you can see behind us are all the, the back issues here. Uh, beautiful hardcovers, posters, the whole shebang bang Everything. Big old row of omnibuses yeah. back there. Believe it or not, they have pops as well. So <laughs> there's that. Um, so, yeah, come on down. Talk to the staff. They're super friendly. They'll point you in the right direction. And just come on down and have a good time. Look around a little bit. Um, so for my one shot this week, I want to talk about one of my absolute favorite games of all time, which is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Uh, it just beat out Big Bird's Number Blast, which was, uh, my second favorite. (laughs) Wow. That's how I learned how to count when I was three years ago. Uh, (laughs) and you're 23. Uh, so you guys may have seen... I may have. You probably have seen the Castlevania it was uh, show on Netflix. Right, right. The game was re-released, I think, relatively recently. The game was re-released Network, yeah. a few times, and I yeah. bought almost every version uh, except the nice. I think the latest one because I don't have a PS5. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Um, <laughs> so Castlevania Symphony of the Night is an action RPG, right. uh, originally published for the PS1 by Konami, yep. and it is the sequel to Castlevania Rondo of Blood. I love that word, Rondo. Rondo? I, Rondo. Rondo? Rondo. <laughs> Let's just say Rondo for 10 minutes. <laughs> Rondo. Uh, it stars everyone's dreamy, everyone's favorite dreamy damn fear, Alucard. Alucard. Uh, as he explores that's Dracula backwards. That's, oh, oh! Time to go. Uh, yeah, right. Um, uh, Alucard, you you play as Alucard as he explores his dad's castle, Dracula's castle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a two D side scroller. Which it fun is. fact, the two D was already pretty much on its way out by that point. Yeah, like yeah. all games were publishing in three D with polygons and all this other stuff, and this game was sort of like. Retro. The very last stand of like 2D sprite side scrolling yeah. and stuff. Um, so it's a side scroller, obviously. It's a Metroidvania style game, which if you don't know, yeah, which is a genre of game where you explore a map. You you basically right. have this gigantic map that you explore, uh, and of course the RPG elements of you know uh, free exploration. Um, Puzzle solving, loot hunting, and of course level grinding. Good old fashioned level Good grinding. Old fashioned level. Grinding. Gotta love it. Um, it's when it came out, it was a sleeper hit. Um, unfortunately, I remember buying the game uh, and thinking it was the greatest thing I'd ever played. It still is, um, but it was a sleeper hit because initially it sold very, very poorly. Yeah. It did real bad. Um, but thanks to that effective advertising called word of mouth. Uh, it became a sleeper hit, and it sold 700,000 units in the U.S. and Japan. Uh, and it is considered, not just by myself, but by many others, to be one of the greatest games of all time. Wow. And, of course, like I just mentioned, it is a pioneer of the Metroidvania genre. Metroidvania. Metroidvania. Like uh, which, of course, is also Ugh. pioneered by uh, Metroid. <laughs> um, so it was developed in 94 for the, uh, Originally for the Sega 32X Under the title Castlevania The Bloodletting <laughs> uh, Changes were made to the project And of course it ended up becoming As we all know and love Symphony of the Night uh, The game was directed by Toru I'm sorry if I say this name incorrectly by the way Toru Hagihara I think I said that right who has also directed? The, who also directed the 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 uh, the the game before it, Rondo of Blood, uh, and then the name that a lot of people who are into the sort of uh, genre, Koji Igarashi, was the senior writer and developer and assistant director on this game. Uh, he would go on to become a, the lead producer of the Castlevania games afterward, and he would and then after that would go on to release his own Metroidvania game nice. called Bloodstained: Ritual of the Night, which I also love. Wow. Yep. Uh, yeah, he didn't mess it up like that Mega Man. What was it called? That Mega Man disaster? <laughs> I forgot. Oh, I can't remember it. it. It's that bad. 
Um, he was a fan of 2D games and was instrumental in sort of refining the game's control scheme at the time. And he felt that action games were way too short, so he wanted to create a game that could be enjoyed for a very long time. Hence, the exploration of Dracula's castle at your leisure. Um, so, instead of doing stage by stage as they would do in all the, the older Castlevania games, right. they went to free exploration, which really works for the game. I absolutely love that. And uh, the mechanics were added. It's huge. The, yeah, the it's it's a big map. It's a huge. Yeah. I I've seen pictures of like the entire map. It took me forever to beat that game. <laughs> um, and then of course the RPG mechanics were added in as Igarashi thought that the uh, Castlevania, the original Castlevania games were too hard for uh, wow. casual players. Uh, I mean, you don't get very much in the in the in the first few games, but in this one you get items and. Uh, you, of course, you get you, you have levels, so you can level up to become right. stronger. That's where all the level grinding comes in. So he basically made it a little easier for you to sort of make yourself stronger for right. that final fight against Dracula, against your daddy. Unless you get your papa. Against your papa. Uh, of course, papa the Drac. XP is... <laughs> Papa, call me Papa Drac. Call me Papa Drac. Do my rapper name, Papa Drac. <laughs> um, now, let me get into one of... The, one of the striking aspects of Symphony of the Night, uh, which is the the book th that came in the jewel case, the yeah. instruction booklet, mm -hmm. because the instruction booklet had the artwork of Ayami Kojima. I don't think she's related. <laughs> uh, Not she had, yeah, sister. Yeah, no, she had a she has a very like bishonen sort of art style, like very yeah. female manga led sort of style. But it works so good because it makes all the artwork look very gothic. Like, if you look at the picture of uh, Alucard, he, he looks kind of like if they painted, an if they if someone painted anime in, like, Renaissance times or something oh, like that. Cool. Yeah. So, like, she, her, cool. art, her art style is very cool. Um, fun fact, his full name is Adrian Fahrenheit Sepesh. I learned that Fahrenheit from somewhere. Sepesh. I can't remember where. Yeah. Wow. Which, of course... <laughs> Tepesh is the yeah, last Tepesh. name of uh, Vlad Tepesh. Vlad Tepesh, who was Dracula, uh, or of, historically uh, Dracula. Son of yeah. Uh, she worked so she did uh, all the uh, the uh, artwork, and uh, of course, like I said, the whole game is like a throwback to like old school sort of Castlevania games, right. but much more beautiful, much right. much better looking. Uh, so just we were a definitely like, very well out of that stuff the by the 2000s. Yeah, we were already going to like 3D models and stuff like that. So this was kind of like. It, it's that whole like um, I think I don't know if it's just Nintendo that sort of thinks this way, but like there's this whole idea of lateral thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. like instead of going up, just take the idea that you have and do something different and new with it. Uh, yeah, and, and it's almost like they can do more because, you know, the industry was already moving past that. Yeah, but at that point, they could do more than they could before too. Right. So it's like the last. You call it the last gasp, but it's also yeah, probably it's a the last, pinnacle of yeah what they could do too. The so. last bastion, right, of like two right. D side right. scrollers, but also like one of the best ones. It's funny because when you look at the way games are now, like people to I, like we were we were hanging out last week yeah. or uh, Saturday. We were hanging out Saturday, yeah. and you guys were talking about uh, Stardew Valley, right? Right. Which when you think about very like, retro looking, yeah, which, but it's when, new. Yeah, yeah. When you think about Fairly games new. and the way they go now, like the most popular games are usually the games that are done in like a retro sort of art style. Yeah. Like I have a bunch of games on well, my Switch that are yeah. side scrollers or like yeah. overhead top. You know I, what I mean? I know that's a little off topic, but I think. When you do a retro game, mm -hmm. you can do it with a relatively small staff, so you you get a much more clarity of vision as opposed to like these huge games. And there's so many of them, you know. You get the GTAs and the Red Deads and and things like that, and they don't always have a clarity of vision, especially well, like Fallout seventy six, especially where it's kind of <laughs> sometimes can be kind of a mess. Oh, that game's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. Anyway, I wasn't yeah. trying to hijack your no, one no, shot. No, no, that's okay. Uh, yeah. That's okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, I just love this idea that, like, when everyone was going 3D, these guys were just like, mm, no, no, we're going to stick to 2D because it's what we can do right now. It's basically <laughs> we what can we do have. It great. This, it's, it's almost like the, the shark from Jaws, right? Right. Like, you, you can use a shark as much as, as you wanted to, so what do you do? You make him mysterious. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't pop up as often. So this is kind of that sort of... Same way of thinking of like, right. yeah, this is what we got. Let's take this idea 
and move it in a direction where it's like really good and really impressive. Uh, cool. It's absolutely one of my favorite games. If you haven't played it, it's cool. available everywhere. Probably on the PlayStation Network. You I think it's still get on the it. PlayStation yeah. Network. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you haven't played it, play it. Uh, if you have played it, uh, play it again. Why wouldn't you? Or play Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which is just as good. Um, well, not just as good, but it's pretty good as well. Uh, anyway, so there you go. That's one of my absolute favorite games to talk about. Let me know what your favorite game is. And if yeah. you loved Symphony of the Night. Uh, Tell us about it. Yeah, if I made any mistakes, please let me know in the comments. Right, right. Uh, like and subscribe if you are so inclined to. And we'll see you guys for the next one shot. Good night. Good night.